In chapter 6, we will be going over buttons and the various ways to use jQuery Mobile to style them. So if we go into my project, again we have our base boilerplate. So we have our header, our content, and our footer. To create a button, you would do it in a variety of ways. We'll go through each option. The first one is to do a traditional anchor tag. So we can create an anchor and we'll give it a ref, just nothing for now. And then we need to tell jQuery Mobile that this should be treated as a button. That way it'll apply the necessary styling to it. And we do that by assigning a role of button. Data role equals button. And let's give it a value of click me. So there we go. So let's save that. And if we view this in our browser, you can see that jQuery will automatically kind of give it a nice button style. So just for example, let's get rid of this. And now you can see that's the, the default state, how you would see it in a browser. But when you apply data role a button, jQuery is going to style that differently. Very nice. Now you have a couple options here. By default, buttons will be block level, meaning they'll take up all available space. However, if we come back and we refresh the page, you'll see that it's not taking effect just yet. But don't worry about that. The truth is jQuery Mobile is in an alpha state. So within the next couple months, all of these bugs will be kinked out. However, right now, that's actually not being applied correctly. That is a bug. And I'll show you a couple bugs with, with working with anchor tags and buttons. However, it's very likely that by the time you watch these videos, these will not be bugs anymore. They will have been fixed. So be sure to keep that in mind. So to give you an idea of what I mean, in addition to using anchor tags, you can also use an input type of submit as well as the standard button element. So click me. And if we view that, you can see that jQuery Mobile will pick up the fact that it's a submit button or the button element, and it'll go ahead and style that for you. You don't even need to designate the data role equals button attribute because, of course, a submit button or a button element is, of course, going to be a button. But watch what happens this time when I apply data inline equals true. Ta-da! So that is technically how it should display across all of these. However, it's a bug right now that anchor tags don't acknowledge that, but they will shortly. So it's just a matter of them getting to it. And if you notice any issues, you can always go to jQueryMobile.com and visit the bug tracker and report these or even help fix some yourself. In addition to buttons, you of course can do an input. So input type equals submit, and we'll give it a value of click me. Okay, and that'll display just like the others. And again, we can apply data inline equals true. And that'll be displayed accordingly. So notice how once you set inline, they're going to be displayed in line, of course. It's easy to forget that sometimes. So remember, by default, they will be block level elements. Now again, I'll show you another bug. Uh, you can apply a theme to the parent. So if these are wrapped within a div, I could say something like data theme and let's do the yellow one. If I refresh the page, you're going to see something interesting here. Notice how the yellow background using CSS3 gradients is applied, but all of these should technically be identical. However, only the anchor tag receives the yellow background. The other two do not. So in order to get the other two to activate, you must explicitly state data theme, excuse me, data theme equals E. By the way, with HTML5, uh, quotes are optional, So, but most people keep them because it keeps things organized, but this is perfectly fine if you want to do it that way. Just try not to mix the two like I'm doing here. Anyhow, so now you can see that it is being applied. This is another bug that should be fixed soon. I've logged it into the bug tracker, and they should have it fixed any day now. So something to keep in mind, though, when you're working. If something doesn't seem true in the alpha state, it might be a bug. Now let's take a look at what else we can do here. We can also position our elements. So I can say data icon equals, and we have a variety of images to use. They're actually contained in one sprite for each theme. So within the yellow theme, we could do a variety of like delete, a plus icon, a minus, a check. Let's do a handful of these first. There you go. And now you can see that it'll apply that custom icon for you. Uh, you can change this. We're not going to do all of them, but I'll show you a couple. There's minus. Let's see what other good ones. Uh, you have forward and backward, which is an arrow. You have an alert. 
like so. You have a bunch of them. Uh, info, a gear. So if you need to do something like maintenance. And then further, you can specify whether the icon should be placed on the left, on the right, or if the icon itself should be the actual button. So let's first begin by saying data icon pose, and that's going to be by default left, or you can change it to right. There you go, and now it's being positioned on the right. Now, check this one out. If we change it, and I don't really like the wording, to be honest, because it's not really applicable to icon position, no text. But nonetheless, it does work, and when you specify this, the jQuery Mobile will disregard the value that you've applied, and it'll simply use the icon itself as the button. So for example, if we do something like delete, and let's make sure we change it right over here, you can imagine placing that within uh, maybe an alert box where you click it and it'll perform some kind of, uh, some event will be performed in which you can do something there. Very cool. The last one I'll show you is star. Okay, now if you'd like to see a full list of them, you have about a dozen available to you. Uh, checks, plus, delete, refresh, forward, a grid, star, info, alert, a bunch of them. Check jQueryMobile.com and look to the documentation area. Now, what if you have a custom sprite of icons you wish to use? You can use those as well, and jQuery Mobile makes it easy to latch onto those. So all you have to do in these cases when you need a custom icon is set the data icon attribute equal to something unique. In this case, why don't we set it to Envato? Now, what's going to happen at this point is jQuery Mobile is going to, um, to make a custom class available to you in your CSS. So now... I can type style and we can access it by doing UI icon and then the name of your style. In this case, we called it Envato. And this will be made, of course, via a class. So here, I don't have any custom icons to use. So we're going to keep it simple, do background red and border, one pixel solid, black, just for the example. So this isn't going to style the button itself. Keep that in mind. Instead, it's going to style the icon and it's going to position it and set it to 18 by 18 pixels. So if I refresh that now, and we'll be sure to get rid of no text because we don't need that in this case. And there we go. So now you can see that that red background is being applied. And all we did was we applied data icon equals our custom value. And then you can target it by doing UI icon and then the name of the value that you applied. So if we get rid of data icon, the positioning, now you can see it's there and it's still bound to the other values. So if I do data icon pose equals right, that's going to position it on the right. And then at this point, if you need to, you can apply a background which links to the image or the sprite that you need to reference. So we have one more note before we conclude this lesson is what if you want two buttons like you see right here. However, you want them to take up all the available space divided by the number of buttons. So in this case, we have two buttons. We want each of these buttons to take up 50% of the width. How you, could you do that? You have a couple options. One, you could do it traditionally with a style sheet and set the width to 48% or somewhere along the lines of that. Or you can use one of the grids that's built into jQuery Mobile, UI-Grid. So we're going to do that in this case, and I'm going to get rid of all of this because we don't need it. Now, in order to take advantage of a, a grid like this, you need to have a wrapping container. So create a div, and I'm going to give it a class of UI grid A. So you have grid A and grid B. A is for two column, a two column grid, and if you did B, that would be for setting up a three column grid. We'll stick with two here. Now within here, we're going to place our two buttons. However, because we want to position them, they need to be wrapped within their own elements as well. So it gets a little bit divitis here. Each of these wrapping divs needs to receive a class. The first one for the one on the left needs to be UI block A. And for the element that should be on the right side of the grid, that should be UI block B. So we'll say class equals UI block A. And this is going to have a child of the, we'll do an input this time. And it's going to have a value of click me. Okay. And now we will simply copy that, paste it in. And the only thing we need to do now is change UI block a to B. 
So if we save that and we come back, now you'll see that each one takes up the available space, and that's because we're using a grid. So if I go into Firebug and I check this out, you're going to see that jQuery adds a whole plethora of classes. As you can see here, span class, UI button enter, UI button corner all, these are all different ways to style everything. Okay, so now, again, if we wanted to work with a three column grid, you would wanna make sure you choose grid B. And then we'll simply yank this, paste it in, and we'll change UI block B to C. And this will be your third grid, as you can see right there. Really easy, very simple to use the grids. All right, so that's going to do it for this lesson. Remember, as with everything, you can theme these if you need to. So the last step is, if you want to, you can apply data theme equals B, and you could do one a different one for the others as well, though you wanna keep some level of consistency, of course. As you can see right there. All right, in the next lesson, we're going to dig into forms, so stay tuned.